the liver, and carbohydrates. Okay, first up, uh, let's see if you guys can draw a liver with me. Somewhere right about maybe the middle of your page. And we're just going to make a real simple one, something kind of like that. Okay, you can do that, right? So there's the liver. And what I want to show you in this page of your notes is just an overview of what the liver does with carbohydrates. So uh, the liver gets carbohydrates from two different places. The first is um, from the foods that you ate. So I'm going to use a purple highlighter and show a blood vessel coming into the liver, the hepatic portal vein. And so this would be glucose and fructose from meals. And that's coming from the intestines. And then um, there's also the hepatic artery. So I'll do pink for that. And that is going to be oxygenated blood for the liver, but will also contain whatever glucose happens to be in the blood at that time. So it's a way for the liver to assess what the current blood glucose is. And then here's new input. So new input and old input, basically. And then the liver can assess, and it will modify... And then the hepatic vein, which I'm using a blue highlighter for, will return um, the, con the nutrients back to the bloodstream, modified to um, adjust for whatever blood glucose uh, was when it came in, and then adjusting for the new blood glucose that came in from a meal, too. Okay, so then we'll take a couple of scenarios. So let's say... Um, that you just ate a lot of glucose and fructose. And first we'll look at what happens to fructose, and why don't we do that in green? So fructose from a meal this could be uh, natural fructose and uh, fruit um, and unfortunately, this would also include, though, the high fructose corn syrup, which is the main kind of sugar in a lot of sodas and candies. So fructose from a meal, uh, the first thing the liver will do is uh, use it to make needed, AT need needed ATP. It wants to burn fructose right away if possible. And then... Um, then the next thing it will do is once it's used as much as it could need at the moment to make ATP, it will convert it to triglycerides. And then those triglycerides will, um, and so that's a process known as lipogenesis. And then that can either be stored in the liver or shipped out to adipose tissue. So for these reasons, um, there's not going to be high levels of fructose in the blood, and um, fructose is not going to be included when someone talks about their blood sugar. They're only talking about glucose in that sense. Okay, so this is um, going to cause then lipogenesis for any excess fructose that someone has in their diet. And then that could lead to a buildup of fat in the liver. Um, in worst case scenarios, that's actually a disorder called fatty liver disease. Um, and then obviously it can uh, lead to an increase in adipose tissue in the body when there's a lot of um, fructose in the diet. And unfortunately, processed foods contain a lot of fructose. Okay, so then we'll look at what happens to glucose up here. So 
So glucose enters the liver from, oops, from uh, either the portal, portal vein, which is draining from uh, the intestines, or from the hepatic artery. Oops, we got we went blurry for a second. Okay, hopefully that's good. So the first thing that the liver will do, just like with fructose, is uh, use it, use it to produce ATP as needed. And then once those ATP needs immediately are the immediate ATP needs are met, then um, glucose, unlike fructose, actually can be stored as glycogen. Fructose has to immediately be converted into uh, triglycerides for storage, but glucose can be stored as um, glycogen, and we call that process glycogenesis. And these are long chains of glucose. So the places in the body that are good at storing glycogen are the liver, and that's what we're talking about right now. But just so you know, the more in shape you get, the better your skeletal muscles get at being able to store lots of glycogen as well. Okay, then um, once the liver has stored as much glycogen as it can, then the remaining glucose is um, stored as fat. And so there's that lipogenesis again, which basically means if you're eating excess um, calories as carbohydrates, they are just stored as fat in your body. And then why don't we use a blue highlighter for the glycogenesis. Now, Interestingly, though, you might think about what would happen if you hadn't eaten a meal for a while or you hadn't had any carbohydrates in your meal or, um, yeah, so one of those two things. So your blood glucose is actually kind of getting low. Now what does the liver do? Well, uh, the liver can also do another process that's um, the opposite of glycogenesis. Um, it can, so let's put not enough glucose. No problem for the liver, because in that case, it will just break down the glycogen it's stored, glycogenolysis, or it will break down the fat that it's stored, or if it runs out of glycogen by doing enough glycogenolysis, runs out of fat that's stored in the liver, and... Um, or just has ample amino acids um, coming in, then um, it can also perform gluconeogenesis. And this is um, building glucose from amino acids, so proteins in the diet, or if someone's totally fasting, then proteins from their body. Um, and fatty acids. So you can use up fat stores during a fast um, performing gluconeogenesis. And we can put all of these processes, maybe we just highlight all of them in purple. So these would be the processes that are done when you're stressed out, when you're not eating enough, or um, if you're um, lacking carbohydrate in the diet. And then if you have a lot of carbohydrate in the diet, then your, your liver is going to be performing more of these functions in general. Then there's one other process that the liver can do. Um, rather than directly making glucose, it can just make um, ketones, and that's called ketogenesis. And that's when it produces uh, ketones, and these are a glucose substitute for most parts of the bodies. And it's mostly producing these from fatty acids. So that would be another option. And all of these processes can be going on at um, low levels at different time. And if you don't have enough glucose, your body is going to be stimulated to be doing all of these um, just uh, in different proportions at different times. 
Oh, and then I wanted to tell you about a couple hormones. So hormones influence this too. So insulin is released from the pancreas uh, when blood sugar gets high. And then if you think about it, what would make sense then? Is it going to um, stimulate these processes? Um, or, so would, would the, which, would, which would bring blood sugar down? Would glycogenesis and lipogenesis decrease blood sugar? Or would glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, and lipolysis in the liver? And hopefully as you think about that, realize that insulin stimulates these processes and that allows um, glucose let's say that came into the liver or from the food and then it is stopped at the liver and it doesn't go back into the bloodstream to increase blood sugar further so we can bring blood sugar down and then a different hormone cortisol can actually stimulate these other processes So some to more degrees than others, but definitely cortisol stimulates glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis and, and lipolysis. I'm not as sure as much about ketogenesis. It wouldn't surprise me, though. But the end effect, then, is that cortisol raises blood sugar. Is it stimulating uh, the, the liver to break down its glycogen, its fat stores, and make new glucose, and then put that glucose back into the blood?